The Nigerian education sector has suffered from incessant strikes fueled by what the Academic Staff Union of Universities is called failed promises. Poor facilities and infrastructure maintenance, budget leakage and many more. In July of this year, the Student Solidarity Group lambasted the President Bola Tinubu administration saying, the promise of high quality tertiary education for all Nigerians, regardless of economic status, has been broken by the government. Countless students from low-income families who once aspired to pursue their dreams are now being denied the right to an education due to exorbitant fees. The government's so-called student loan scheme may appear to be a lifeline, but it is nothing more than a hollow promise." End of quote. We then saw tertiary school students in different parts of the country protest hiking fees, with some schools eventually bowing to pressure. Failed promises of free education in Nigeria is our first hot topic this morning on The Breakfast. First also this morning, the group managing director Abdul has said for Nigerians to enjoy constant electricity supply, supply there is need for more investment in the sector that will culminate in the country being able to generate 200 megawatts of electricity. We'll be looking at how that can come to be on the breakfast this morning. We'll also be taking a look at the front pages of some national dailies as our analyst joins us to look at the headlines this morning on Off the Press. Hello, good morning, and welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Maureen Menongo Izigwe. And I am Nyamgul Agaji. Uh, this is the second Monday in the month of uh, October. So you've got two Mondays in the last quarter of this year. This is not the time to panic that you may not have achieved all that you set your mind to achieve, but count the small blessings that you have had and see that they will uh, become something really big and you still have the rest of the year to achieve whatever you're going to achieve and I think it's high time we started telling ourselves that uh, life is not marked by the number of months some people when they get close to the end of the year I say oh I'm such a failure I couldn't do this or do that and then they make new year resolutions that by February they have forgotten about so, <laughs> so I don't know your life doesn't start from January and end in December Plan your life for a very long period of time. It doesn't have to be cramped into one year and you think you are a failure if it gets to December and you didn't achieve everything you wanted. Yeah, you're right. You know, today being Mindset Monday, one of the things that came to mind over the weekend, and I, I'm still asking myself, why did it come to mind? I was wondering, what is it that makes people say and do some of the things they do when you see men kill women because relationships have ended, mm -hmm. or women kill men because relationships have ended, mm -hmm. what is it that makes a man say, oh, if I can't have you, then no other person can? Yeah. Or a woman say, <laughs> if I can't have him, no other no person other. can. And then they go ahead and kill somebody. Well, it's, it's just weird. And uh, some of these people are still the ones that say, love doesn't exist. Uh, and then you do things that are extreme in the name of this same love that you don't even believe in and all that. So it's just a weird world that we are in. What will you say if I can't have you, nobody else can? Hmm. You're not his father or her father. You didn't create him. You didn't him. create the <laughs> you person. Didn't create even if you were the father, you have no right to terminate someone's life just because of selfish reasons, because that's selfish, no matter how we look Indeed. at it. Indeed. And really you know, selfish. over time, we've heard so many gory stories mm. about this in our space. You know, how a man chopped off his, you know, uh, killed his wife in the most gruesome way because he found out that she was cheating or that she no longer wants to be in the relationship. Mm. And then you find women who have chopped off uh, chopped off their man's genitals because they found that he wants to marry another woman and all of such. And you just wonder what triggers 
their mind? What is it in the brain that just makes them lose it? And worst of all is that some of these things come as a result of just gossip, you know. Someone heard and someone told you that this, or so you've seen a text in your husband's uh, phone or your wife's phone. You don't even know the <laughs> genesis of this. Uh, you're just jealous and you go ahead and, and terminate someone's life. They, they, I can't wrap my head around it, why this should happen. Yeah, people should get above it. I mean, if you're in a relationship, it's, it is what it is, a relationship. You run into that person one day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your life existed before that day. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly that day you run into that person and something happens. There's a click, a chemistry or whatever, a biology. Yeah. <laughs> and so if at the end of the day, it's, it's, one of you decides it's no longer practicable, it's no longer safe, it's no longer interesting to mm -hmm. continue, hey, just move, move on. on. And you have to also understand, Christmas is coming. This, times are hard. There's a possibility that some relationships, those gifts that used to change hands, may not change hands anymore. It's not good enough reason for you to say, uh, my husband has changed, he doesn't take care of me anymore. At Christmas, he couldn't buy me what he used to buy me. And then the relationship goes south. It shouldn't be that way. So prepare your mind that these times are hard. Both of you, like she said, it's a, a relationship. Both of you are relating. Discuss your matter. Find out solutions if there will be solutions. Manage what you can manage. Mm -hmm. And finish this year and enter the next year. Let's hope that things will be better as uh, we're hoping that they will be better. Indeed. Let's go to our top trend in this morning. With very first one, countries around the world have condemned a wave of Palestinian attacks that Israeli's army say left more than 200 dead. Matter of fact, I hear us at this morning, 700 of them already dead uh, in Israel. Uh, some countries also called for a de-escalation of the conflict after Israel launched airstrikes and other military operations targeting Gaza. The Palestinian authorities say killed more than 230 people. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has vowed severe retaliation after Hamas's surprise assault. President Joe Biden expressed U.S. support for Israel, calling it rock-solid and unwavering. Israel's regional neighbor, Saudi Arabia, in its statement through its foreign ministry, called for an immediate halt to the escalation between the two sides while asking for protection of civilians. The U.N.'s human rights chief, Volker Turk, also called for an immediate end to the violence and appealed to all sides and key countries in the region to de-escalate to avoid further bloodshed. He said he was deeply concerned at reports that Israeli civilians have been taken hostage. Brazil, which holds the UN Security Council presidency, separately condemned the attacks on Israel in a statement from its foreign ministry, which urged all parties to exercise maximum restraints so as to avoid escalating the situation. Even Russia's foreign ministry has called for an immediate ceasefire. The Nigerian government also called for a ceasefire hours after Gaza's rulers, Hamas, launched a multi-pronged assault at dawn with thousands of rockets and ground air and sea forces attacking and infiltrating Israeli towns and kibbutz communities. This latest outbreak of hostilities is being called the worst fighting in decades. Estimates claim the conflict has killed more than 700 Israelis and wounded over 1,000 living bodies of civilians strewn on roads, while on the Gaza side at least 313 have died and over 1,700 reported wounded. In a statement on Saturday, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Yusuf Tugar, said the escalation between both countries would result in an unending cycle of pain and suffering for the civilian population, advising that both parties should exercise restraint and prioritize the safety of civilians. He urged both parties to create room for humanitarian considerations, calling for dialogue. Meanwhile, major airlines canceled drones of fights, flights to Tel Aviv over the weekend. That was a very horrible thing we saw playing out over the weekend. And civilians were being killed. I understand uh, one of the first places that was struck was a party, 
a part of Israel where a party was going on that had about 3,000 people from not just Israelites, but people from different parts of the world joining them. Uh, and uh, I think 300 people were killed just in that party alone. Uh, I just wonder why there's ever war in the first place. What are we fighting for? And you just said civilians were killed. And I'm asking, should even the army be killed? A war is fought and there are people who are designated to die for the country. So you're fighting a war with Nigeria. We're expecting our army men to die and not civilians. Nobody should ever have to die. Why do we even fight wars over what? I keep asking me, myself this question. The people who even plan the war, who, who cause the war, do not go to the war front. The politicians, are, because it's always a political thing, the politicians are somewhere there sitting there and sending people's sons and husbands into the field to go and die. And when, when we even see the civilian population is being targeted, like you know, people complain in, the, in Ukraine, in Russia, the civilian population is being targeted. So you're telling us that if the civilians are not targeted, there are people just designed, let me use the word, to go and die, designated to die. Well, whether we like it or not. ever have to die. No, but whether we like whether it or not, not, that is the world we live in. War is absolutely meaningless, but that is the world we live in. It's, it's and for Israel, this is the worst I in 700 years. Yeah. This is the worst they've experienced in 700 years, and they've likened it to uh, what happened in the U.S. 9-11. This is how they've likened it. Israel is, is a country with a population of 9 million people, and it's also a country that values every single life. I mean, some years ago, we saw them exchange 1,000 Palestinians for one Israeli that was held hostage. And so you can imagine what this means to them, because apart from the people that have been killed, some have been taken hostage, including elderly people. It's, it's going to spiral into something really terrible, because Israel is a war nation, so mm. to speak. Their own form of NYSC is military. You go there, you, you, are, you come of age, you have to be a military person for yeah. at least a year mm -hmm. to, to know how it is. So everybody on the streets can fight mm -hmm. in Israel. Yeah. And, um, I, I, don't, I don't just even want to imagine what this could lead to. I hope that as the entire in, uh, international community is condemning the attacks and all that, that tensions will come down a little bit. Otherwise, war in Ukraine and Russia, war in Israel and all, uh, nobody knows where else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The 120-something countries have already pledged support for Israel right now. 126, I think, have pledged support to Israel. And then you have 27 countries pledging support, you know. We to, shouldn't even have uh, to the take Hamas sides. Why, why should we even, even start taking sides? Let's just see what, I, I don't even know <laughs> what to say. But You're sounding utopian. Yeah, yeah, well, be realistic. This is the world we live in. 120 something supporting Israel. That means if if the other side, which is being supported by 20-something, says, okay, I know agree, I know agree, as we say in Nigeria, mm. that means these other people will be helping Israel to fight the other people. Oh, yes, the U.S. have already given release now, a very serious... We are seeing the same thing in Russia and Ukraine. And as far as I'm concerned, nobody even asked Russia, Russia's opinion or anything, mm. if the world is just supporting Ukraine because they are the minority, they are the small ones, they have been... They are the ones that are suffering. Nobody hears the story of Russia. Russia is saying, okay, you don't want to hear my story? All right, we're going ahead. There's a fear that if Russia is at the verge of losing, there might be a nuclear war. Especially since, that's terrible. since they have uh, the support of China and uh, North Korea. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they become yes. good friends. The North Korean guy went there not long ago to, to Russia on a visit. And, and so we don't know what... This, as I said, is the world we live in. Could all of these lead to the Third World War? I don't know. But it is the world we live in, and things unfold. It's, it's terrible. Our world is things terrible. Things unfold. We should, we should do something about it. And that's why in Nigeria here, we always talk about caution for everything. For now, like uh, in the FCT, the, the police command has said data on reported killings and abduction in the city uh, is making the rounds is uh, false. That uh, this uh, is just in, as the, the information that people are 
are taking into the streets and saying that it is happening in Abuja is not the way it's happening. It may be happening. There's insecurity. They have given some figures of people uh, who have been kidnapped and people who have been uh, arrested in connection to the kidnappings of some other people. There was a viral video that uh, we saw a few days ago where someone was trying try, fighting with someone inside the vehicle and they were calling it a one chance thing. Uh, one chance is a common thing nowadays. It has always been there, but now it's as if it's, it's coming back in a way that we should not. Uh, yeah, a new wave, a new wave yes. of one chance. But it's, it's according to the police, it is not enough for people to start saying the insecurity has skyrocketed in such a way that it will put panic in the hearts of a lot of people. So many things happen when there is panic, things that we do not want. So they are trying to manage the information. I do know that the figures may not be as, as uh, the people are putting out there, but also the figures may be more than what the police is giving. <laughs> so, yeah, one can understand why the police is trying to contain yeah, the whole situation. But again, those who are spreading these stories are also probably doing so to get people aware that there's danger out there, there's danger out there. We heard the news of, is it good news? Two weeks ago, the lady that experienced one chance and was taken to a hospital and was rejected. They didn't yeah. treat her and she bled to death. She died. All right. And so we also had a situation here in Lagos. I, I knew two people before we experienced, a lady in our office here experienced one. So uh, it's, uh, it may not be appropriate to say they are exaggerating it because you cannot um, take away people's reality and truths from them. If they've seen people who have experienced it, and probably they have also experienced it, you cannot tell them, no, you didn't experience it, so that we can keep calm and not let people get panicked. Well, there is insecurity, but it's, it's not... Is it a better thing to spread the fear or a better thing to manage what is happening? Because let me take a funny, a funny incident. Mm. During the COVID, when they began to give the um, symptoms of COVID, a lot of people felt they had COVID because you'd just be watching yourself like, am I breathing correctly? <laughs> 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 if it didn't happen to you, it happened to a lot of yeah. people, including myself. Like, okay, this breathing that I'm doing now <laughs> feels as if could it be COVID? Because of the fear. Fear, yeah. can lead you to fear a is a torment. Things. Yes, it's a terrible thing. Yes, there's insecurity. Everybody should be aware of that. But sometimes, this social media, we forward the things that we have no way of even verifying. And so it's dangerous to, to blow everything out of proportion. Definitely. There is insecurity everywhere. We, we won't even say Abuja or the North or anything. In Lagos, there's insecurity. In Cross River, there's insecurity everywhere. So let's spread the awareness to be security conscious and leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Let the figures come from the official world. Yes, indeed. Um, that's exactly uh, spreading the message and not the fear. Yeah. But I don't know if you can separate the two. <laughs> you can, you can. I don't know if you can separate the two, if you can spread the message without the fear accompanying I can say it. there is insecurity. Please be careful how you move. I shouldn't say one million people have been killed <laughs> today. I shouldn't say that. You know. All right, so let's go to the third top trending this morning. And uh, the top Trending number three that we have for you this morning is what I am cautiously waiting for. <laughs> As the prompt has been scrolled. Okay, are we getting there? Just move on. We'll yeah. take a break and come back and give you the newspaper headlines. Stay with us.